Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, I received almost the majority of my seeds that I've ordered. I have a few that are still back ordered, but that's my dog, sorry. <laughs> I've received most of the seeds that I've ordered. Some are still back ordered, but I figured since I have the majority of them, I was gonna sit down and film a seed haul. I don't know about you guys, but I love, love watching seed hauls, everything gardening, all that good stuff. I think it's exciting to see what people will be growing this year, things that they're trying out, things that they've tried before. Um, and yeah, so if you are new to the channel, uh, this year I'm going to be farming cut flowers on the property. So I will have a farm that's a little over a quarter of an acre. It's about 14,000 square feet. I'm gonna be farming all of it. I have never farmed flowers before. So I'm learning everything from the beginning. Um, if you would like to follow along with me and see the entire journey, make sure you subscribe. I'm gonna be putting out some videos on each step of the process that I've been taking and also just general overviews on how this all goes. And with that being said, let's dive in. This is gonna be a long video. I'm going to try not to talk too fast while I go through these. It's a little, difficult to see all of this and not, you know, just fly through it so this video isn't super long, but realistically, I'm gonna be planting almost 14,000 plants. So because of that, I have a lot. Um, this is my first time flower farming, as I mentioned, so because of that, I wanted to try everything. I'm in zone 5B for anybody who's curious, so I don't really know what will grow super well, what won't. I've done a little bit of research, but the thing with gardening and farming all in general is, you learn from doing. So I have a very wide variety and let's just hop on in. To start us off, we're gonna start with florette seeds. I'm gonna go by where I purchased them from as I work down. Um, but for, for florette, I have Love and a Mist, the Starry Night mix. And then I also have Clarkia in Tower Coral. I also picked up the Dahlia Bees Choice Mix. These are seeded dahlias, not tuber dahlias. Obviously, they come in a packet. Um, I will have an entire row of dahlias coming from tubers, but I'm not going to include that in this because they're not seeds. But I will go through my entire farm plan, everything that I'm growing in a second video. So if you want to check out all the things, including dahlias, roses, ranunculus, peonies, um, what else, anemones, all that good stuff, Stay tuned for another video. So I've also got pincushion flowers. I have Summer Sangria, Snow Maiden, and Black Knight. I have Winged Everlasting. And then for carnations, I have the Shabod, Shabod, Giandianus, Aurora, Orange Sherbert, and La France. And then for straw flowers, I have Scarlet, Dragonfire, Apricot Mix, and Silvery Rose. For Phlox, I have two different types. I have Creme Brulee and Phlox of Sheep. Um, for Zinnias, I have Zinderella Lilac, Little Flower Girl Mix, Signora, Isabellini Creamy Yellow, Cinderella Peach, Cupcake Pink, Benary's Giant Lilac, and Benary's Giant Pink. And then I also have two types of Larkspur. I have the Smoky Eyes and Summer Skies mix. Clungella, I have two kinds, Ivory Princess and Bronze Beauty. Sweet Peas, I have a lot of. Um, I'm growing an entire row, which will be 100 feet of Sweet Peas. Sweet Peas are my favorite flower. I wanted to do two big rows this year and have a tunnel of Sweet Peas, but I will be selling these flowers. I will be putting them together for market bouquets and doing delivery subscriptions. Um, I'm not necessarily in the place in my life where I can dump this much money into a farm and have it not bring back some type of financial revenue. So I, because of that, I wanted to keep a mindful eye on what exactly I was growing to make sure that it would sell. Sweet peas are not something that you commonly see in market bouquets, at least in my region, um, but I'm really hoping that people enjoy them as much as I do, and if they do sell really well, next year, two rows, it's happening. Sweet peas, I have Dynasty, Azurus, Richard and Judy, R. Harry, Bix, Restore Mel, Ethel Grace, Molly Rylestone, Blue Shift, Windsor, Oban Bay, Chloranthus, Marjorie Carrier, and High Society. And then I also have Cosmos. Um, I have Apricot Lemonade, Xanthos, Veluette, and Cupcake Blush. Snapdragons are my second favorite flower. I have an entire row and a half dedicated to them. Uh, it'll make more sense when you actually see the entire farm layout, but I have a lot of snapdragons, a lot of different kinds and colors. I cannot wait to see all of them. So I have Costa Apricot, 
Costa Silver, Summer Lavender, and Sherbert Toned Chantilly Mix. China Asters, which again, I'm in 5B. So there is supposedly this thing called the Aster Yellows, um, and it's a disease that spreads through all asters within the Midwest. I don't know if that's actually accurate. I'm really hoping it's not because I have an entire row dedicated to China Asters. So I may just be losing 100 feet of China Asters this coming summer. I'm not sure, but hopefully it works out. So I have Rose Quartz Mix, Valkyrie Pink, Valkyrie Yellow, Valkyrie Chamois, and Tower Chamois Apricot. And then I also have Corn Cockle Ocean Pearls. These look like beautiful white flowers and very unique, so I'm excited to see what those look like. Um, and then as far as poppies, trying out all kinds. So for bread seed poppies, I have Frosted Salmon and Lilac Peony. For Shirley poppies, I'm doing Amazing Grey, Mother of Pearl, Pandora, and Supreme. For Iceland poppies, I'm doing Pastel Meadows and Sherbert Mix. And then for California poppies, I have Cream Swirl, Thai Silk Pink Champagne, and Thai Silk Apple Blossom Chiffon. Only two more rows left for Florette. I'm not gonna say we're halfway, because we're not, but we're getting there. So I've got two types of Globe Amaranth or Gumfrina, uh, Pastel Mix and Sunset Mix. And then for sunflowers, I will have an entire row of sunflowers. I'm very excited to just try a lot of the different varieties. I'm also gonna play around with spacing a bit. Um, where my field is located, it is pretty open to the wind. So I want to try spacing them fairly close together to see if they'll support themselves. And I also know that the closer you space them, the smaller the blooms will be, or they won't grow to be as big. And I have some that I wanna see just how big I can grow a sunflower. So I'll space those out a little differently, but I'm excited to play a lot, play around with these throughout the season. Um, but I have Pro Cut White Light, Pro Cut Red, Pro Cut White Night, Pro Cut Gold, and Ruby Eclipse. All right, and then I have the White Mignonette, uh, Celosia, I have Pink Champagne, Flamingo Feather, and Texas Plume Vintage Rose. Status, I have the Sunset Mix and the Rat Tail. Clary Sage, I'm doing the Clary Mix. And then for Eucalyptus, I will have an entire row of Eucalyptus as well. So I'm trying out all the different kinds. I have Small Leaved Gum, Round Leaved Malay, Silver Dollar, and Baby Blue. All right, so I have Chinese Forget-Me-Nots in Blue Showers and Mystic Pink. The Celine Blushing Lanterns, which looks so Gorgeous. I'm excited to really see what those look like in person. Um, nasturtium, I'm doing two ty three types, the Ladybird Rose, Gleam Salmon, and Yeti. I'm also curious to see the differences between these because the two, Yeti and Gleam Salmon, should be on a trellis, whereas Ladybird Rose doesn't need to be. So I'm excited to see kind of how those differ from each other, even though they're different, like outside of the different colors. Then I have Figwort. Poor Man's Orchid in the Angel's Wings Mix, Burns Lemon Basil, Dark Opal Basil, the Dill Bouquet, Greek Oregano, the Bunny Tails Ornamental Grass, Jewels of Opar, Honeywort Pride of Gibraltar, Bee Balm in Lambada and Bergamo, and the New Look Dusty Miller. We have Amaranth in Coral Fountain, Hot Biscuits, and Op Popio, <laughs> Popio, and then I'm also doing Yarrow Summer Berries. And then I also picked up some biennials. So I don't know much about biennials. I've been focusing a lot on annuals, <laughs> but I want to kind of test it out and explore. So I picked up some Sweet Rocket Pale Lavender and then Foxglove. I did a few different kinds of Foxglove. So I've got the Cafe Cream, Dalmatian Peach, Camelot Cream, Obscura Sunset, and Apricot Beauty. So I need to do more research on the biennial side of it. To my understanding, they basically take a year and a half to come to maturity and blooming. So I will start these from seed in the spring, plant them out in the summer, and then leave them, and then they will bloom the following spring, I believe. If any of you guys grow these commonly. Let me know down below your experience on that or any tips and tricks on the timing. We do get pretty harsh winters here. There is a foot of snow outside and we're waiting for a snowstorm to come. So the thought of leaving something outside in the winter just seems like a death sentence. So let me know if you have any experience with that. 
All right, that is it for four Florette. Let's move on to Johnny's. I'm just gonna roll right into the next one. Okay, so Johnny's, I have Nigella. I'm doing the Albion Black Pod, the Albion Green Pod, Delft Blue, and Miss Jekyll Dark Blue OG. Um, I'm also doing Delphiniums. I just have the Magic Fountain Mix. I picked up two of them. And then for Rude Beckia, we have Indian Summer, Sahara, Cherokee Sunset Mix, and Cherry Brandy. I have some more Zinnias as well. Uh, Queen Lime Red, Queen Red Lime, Benary's Giant Bright Pink, Creamy Yellow Giant Dahlia Flowered Zinnia. Cinderella Peach, and Benary's Giant Wine. So for Larkspur, we have the QIS Dark Blue, Misty Lavender, QIS White, uh, Fancy Pink with White B, and QIS Carmine. And then stock is something that I'm apprehensive about. I really like stock. I think it's a beautiful flower. It's really nice as a good it's a really great type of spike flower, but it also is fluffy enough that I feel like it takes up a lot of space within a bouquet and an arrangement. Um, but that being said, they are a one hit wonder. So you cut them once, they do not bloom again. So for this, I'm gonna be succession planting fairly hard to make sure that I have stock throughout the season. Whether or not that's gonna work out, I don't know. I had to buy a lot of stock seed to make sure I had enough to succession plant throughout the season. Um, so we'll see. So for the types that I have, Cat's Apricot, Iron Yellow, Iron Purple, Iron Rose Pink, Iron Marine, Cat's High Double White, Vintage Brown, Cat's Ruby, and Iron Pink. Okay, and then for Cosmos, I have Afternoon White, Xenia, Rubenza, Double Click Bicolor Violet, and Double Click Snow Puff. More Snapdragons, so I have Madam Butterfly Bronze with White, Potomac Pink, Madame Butterfly Bronze, Madame Butterfly Pink, Madame Butterfly Red, Potomac Orange, Potomac Apple Blossom, Potomac Lavender, Costa Silver, Potomac Royal, Potomac Ivory, and Potomac Yellow. I also picked up some asters, so King Size Apricot, Lady Coral Lavender, Tower Chamois, Tower Blue, Tower Yellow, Tower Violet, and Tower Silver. Um, you will notice there's a lot of repeat colors, so I definitely have Tower Chamois from Florette, but I picked up some more from Johnny's because Johnny's has larger quantities for a cheaper price, and because I am succession planting, it worked out well for me to buy similar to buy the same variety from different places that were selling seeds. Um, and that's because of how quickly things were selling out, the availabilities, pricing, all that good stuff. So again, if you can't find something specific on one website, look on others. I'm also doing the Champagne Bubbles Orange F1 for the Iceland Poppies. For sunflowers, I have Buttercream, uh, Pro Cut Orange, Red Hedge, Pro Cut White Knight, uh, Pro Cut Plum, Pro Cut Red, Sun Rich Orange, and then Teddy Bear, which I have a lot of the Teddy Bear ones. I'm really excited to see these. They're super fluffy and they just look absolutely adorable. Um, and then I also have Ruby Parfait Solosia. So I'm also doing a lot of lavender. Everyone seeing those beautiful fields where it's just lavender. I'm not gonna be doing just a field of lavender, but I am gonna try and put as much lavender possible in my garden. So I think I've got 70 feet dedicated to it. That being said, there are a lot of different types of lavender. So I'm gonna try and grow any of them that I can get my hands on. From Johnny's, I picked up the Elegance Purple Lavender. Um, and then I also have Erangium, which to me looks like a thistle. I'm not 100% sure if that's accurate. I do love using blue thistle in floral design. I think it adds a really beautiful type of texture. And if you really like eucalyptus and that silvery green blue shade of green, um, I feel like blue thistles are kind of that perfect match for that. And sometimes they can have a really violet center or more of a blue center. So I'm hoping I can grow these. I don't know if I can successfully, but I'm gonna try. I have the blue glitter and the white glitter. 
I have a bunch of basil. Um, my brother is the chef and owner of a vegan restaurant here in town. So he's constantly making pesto, a lot of other vegetables, which you will see in the later parts of the seed haul. We're gonna kind of test out and see how we can use in recipes. So I ordered every kind of basil I could also get my hands on. I think that a lot of basil has really beautiful flowers that you can add for a nice textural element and also the smell of it is intoxicating. Um, so I'm excited to design with these and also eat them. <laughs> um, so we have the sweet Thai, Genovese, uh, Aromato, and cinnamon. We've also got rosemary, the extra extracta sage, and cumin. I'm also gonna grow the hyacinth bean, the ruby moon. I have some copper plume atriplex. And then for my grasses, um, I have the ornamental grasses in the northern sea oats, bromus grass, green drops. And then I also have silver tip and black tip wheat. These look so cool and unique. Another two, which these are biennials, I believe, or perennials. But this is the Columbine in the McKenna Giants and the Barlow mix. These are something that I'm gonna probably plant around the house because then they're here for my parents at all times. Let's move on to Swallowtail. I have the Scabiosa or the Pincushion Flowers. I have the Fama Deep Blue, which I think, which I'm really excited to see in person. Blue is not a very commonly found color in nature and these look to be a very kind of like light periwinkle color. So I'm excited to see what those look like. Um, I have Cinderella Lilac Zinnias. I also have some more sweet peas. I found that Swallowtail had some really unique types uh, and they also had a type that I couldn't find anywhere else and they had plenty of it there. So it was nice to find that. But for sweet peas, I have Apricot Sprite, Turquoise Lagoon, King's High Scent, and Nimbus, which is the one that I couldn't find many other places, but I was able to find there. Uh, for Snapdragons, I have Night and Day Snapdragons and the Chantilly Light Salmon. For Peonies, I have the Giant Double Black Peony Poppy. I also have the Giant Double Cream Peony Poppy. Um, and then for Bread Seed Poppies, I have Cherry Glow, Hungarian Blue, and then Danish Flag and Jimmy's Flag. Some of these are just super funky looking and I wanted to make sure that I was growing flowers that I enjoy and flowers that I know a lot of other people enjoy and that will sell well, but also I wanted to find some really funky stuff to add into my arrangements. And I'm really excited to see these Jimmy Flag um, bread seed poppies. Two different types of lavender. These are the Lavence and the Munstead Dwarf English Lavender. And then I have Cleom in the Queen Mix. This is something that I saw and it just looked super funky. It's these really spidery big blooms. Um, I'm not really sure how I'm going to arrange with them yet, but I'm kind of excited for the challenge and it's supposed to be different mixtures of like violet and pink and white. So I'm excited to see what these end up looking like and if they can actually grow in this climate. Um, and then I have another Erangium. This is the Blue Glitter Sea Holly. This one looks much more vibrant blue and it doesn't have as much green in it as the other Blue Glitter from Johnny's. Two other things which I don't know how they're gonna grow are pompous grass. So I picked up the white feather and pink feather. These supposedly grow to be huge. So this is something that I'm going to be planting around the perimeter of the property in little bits and pieces to kind of just see how it goes. Um, and hopefully I have some pompous grass to play with by the time fall rolls around. So the next place is Baker's Creek. I would highly recommend ordering their seed catalog. First off, who doesn't want to flip through a catalog and just dog ear every single page? But I found that they have a lot of really good, funky varieties of flowers, and then also a ton of vegetables. I think they're better known for their produce, but I was able to find some really cool types of flowers that I'm already growing to kind of add into the mix that kind of differentiates from the regular from the standards that you're seeing everywhere. To start off, I have the African Daisy in Blue Disc. These look gorgeous. They are a white daisy with this beautiful like periwinkle lavender center and this really delicate yellow rim around the center. I think they just like are absolutely stunning and very unique. For Dianthus or Carnations, I have black and white minstrels. For Zinnias, I have the Scabiosa Mix Persian Carpet. 
the Mazurkia and the Macarania. And then I have two types of sweet peas, which I have this sweet pea from Florette, um, but I also have it from here. This is the Azuras Blue, and then the Beaujolais sweet peas. For Cosmos, I picked up the Black Magic, Japanese Kiro, Bright Lights, Fizzy Rose Picote and Candy Floss Red. For bread Seed Poppies, I picked up Black Peony. And then for Shirley Poppies, Amazing Gray, Mother of Pearl, Pandora, and Supreme. Okay, we're almost there, guys. Uh, sunflowers from Baker's Creek. All right, so these are the ones that I just wanna see how big of a sunflower I can grow. These are supposed to be massive and I want to see just how big I can grow one. So I picked up the Mongolian Giant and the Titan. These are supposed to be absolutely huge. Like the Titan says that some flower heads have reached 24 inches across and then, you know, same thing to these Mongolians say that they could be sitting atop a 14 foot tall stake. I'm five feet tall myself. So I just really wanna see my five foot self standing next to a 12 foot tall sunflower. I think that that would be great, even though staking is probably gonna be a nightmare. So I'm gonna try my best to stake them so they don't fall over. All right, moving on to all of the herbs. More dill, marvelous mint, chives, oregano, and thyme. And then I also picked up the white borage, and then I believe I picked up the blue. It wasn't available when I first did all of my shopping, but when I was on there the other day looking for some information on some of these, they had it in stock. And I'm almost positive I picked it up because it has these beautiful little delicate flowers, and I think that'll be a very nice filler. And the blue specifically is this vibrant purple blue shade. And then I have some showy milkweed, agastache rose mint, and then brightest brilliant quinoa. I don't know how easy the actual process of going from growing quinoa to having quinoa that you can cook is, but I'm gonna try and figure it out and I'm gonna see if I can grow my own quinoa. Um, and then as far as the milkweed, having bees and butterflies in my field is a very high priority. I wanna do as much as I can, have as much pollinators to really bring them all in and give as much to their population. I personally love butterflies, they're very near and dear to me, so I'm hoping that I have a good mix of things that brings them around and creates a nice habitat for them to live in. I also picked up some buckwheat. I picked this up because of the rose red soba, these beautiful pink filler flower that I think will be great, but also I picked up the white, also for filler flower, but I'm curious as to using this for a cover crop. Um, I don't have anything covering my field right now. I tilled it, fertilized it, and then winter came around. I was very late to the start on that. So whether or not that was kind of a waste of fertilizer, it very well may be. But going into next year, I wanna put a cover crop down. Um, and buckwheat, buckwheat is said to be a good one, but I'm not sure if it'll be great for my area. If you know anything about cover crops and you use buckwheat, let me know. So for vegetables, I have the Coniverse Colossal Asparagus, and then two different types of Brussels sprouts, Long Island Improved and Groninger. For sugar snap peas, I have sugar bond and sugar daddy. And then for cantaloupes, I have a melon, it's Tommy apple. And then moving on to tomatoes, I have the sunrise bumblebee, they're like a cherry tomato. And then the green zebra tomatoes. Um, I also picked up the Deline celery. And then two types of cucumbers, the Chicago pickling and Boston pickling. I really want to make my own pickles this year. Even if they're not from cucumbers from my own garden, I will go out and get cucumbers and try pickling. I've never done that before, but I really want to figure out how to do that. I would love to have a year long supply of pickles. That would be great. Um, and then for peppers, I picked up Golden Cal Wonder, California Wonder, and then also these Lesia peppers, which this is a great example of Baker's Creek having some really interesting varieties. These are supposed to be a super sweet pepper and they look really funky. I've never seen them before, so I'm excited to grow those and see how those turn out. Carrots, I have four types. New Corota, Corral, Black Nebula, and Cosmic Purple. And then I also have two types of spinach, the giant noble spinach and strawberry spinach, which again, I've never seen before. It supposedly has these fruits that are very sweet and nice to add to salads, so we'll see how that works out. Um, and then Baker's Creek also sends you some free seed with your order, so they sent over some Russian red or ragged jack kale. Down to the final three, which these are very, very small. Um, from Eden Seeds, I picked up China Asters in the Duchess Peony White. I was not able to find any white asters anywhere. 
except for Eden. So I picked this up, so I have a white variety. And then they had two funky types of Snapdragons, which I thought looked beautiful. Um, Orange Wonder and the Rose. Uh, Burpee is the next one. I have two types of watermelon, Crimson Sweet and Sugar Baby. I also have cilantro and then tomatillo gi gigante, gigante. <laughs> um, I have tomatillos as well. And then sweet corn, I have the sweetness hybrid. I've never grown sweet corn before. I mean, I haven't grown majority of these things before, um, but I'm curious as to how I'm gonna keep the animals away from it. Uh, we have a lot of deer, a lot of raccoon, a lot of wildlife around here. So if anyone has any recommendations on how to protect sweet corn from predators, let me know, because I'm gonna be open to that. I'm gonna be really bummed if I plant all this sweet corn and all the animals take it. I mean, it's great that they get food, but like, I really wanna try some sweet corn that I grew. So the very last one is a packet of zinnia seeds from Dawn Creek Farm. This is something that I'm tremendously excited for, and I'm hoping that a lot of other farms do this. They basically sent out zinnia seeds from their breeding patch and they kind of posted on their Instagram saying that they're gonna be opening up a donation site. So if you donated a certain amount of money, they would send you seeds, or if you could just donate and not get seeds, you could donate and give your seeds to someone else. Um, but I really, really like the idea of this, and I'm very excited to see what comes up. They have all the details on the back saying how, you know, all of these are gonna be new colors and forms that they've never seen before, maybe no one's seen them before, but I'm really excited to see these, and I think it's just a beautiful way to Kind of share what's happening on your farm with other people and it's a great way for them to bring in some money and for people to support them so i'm very excited to see what these zinnias turn out like all right guys that's it if you made it to the end of this haul congratulations i hope you had some tea and some snacks hope you were doing other things on the side while you were listening to me ramble I also hope you're excited to see how these all turn out. I'm tremendously excited to see these go from seeds to actual plants, well, to from seeds to seedlings to actual plants. Like I said, we're currently waiting for a snowstorm to come and hit at any moment. So I'm looking out at the field and it's just covered in snow. So thinking of all the varieties that I will hopefully have in a couple months is very exciting. But if you wanna follow along uh, my first attempt at flower farming, please make sure to subscribe and like this video. I'll be coming out with all the different steps and processes broken up into bite-sized pieces. Definitely not as long of a video as this one is. Um, but that's it for me guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one.